I'm really glad you're watching because we have a very fun show today. This week we're rebroadcasting our 30 things everyone should know. Some of them seem simple, but you'd be surprised by how many people really don't know how to do some of these things. So if you watch all week, you'll be 30 things richer. But before we get to that, I'd like to show you a good thing. You can add a special touch to an ordinary pillow like this by decorating it with a border of silk cording. Uh, and you can get cordings, uh, trims, fringes, uh, moss fringe at uh, trimming stores, at fabric stores, and choose something that uh, goes prettily with your decor of your house, of course, and with um, uh, your color scheme. Uh, and to do a pillow like this, this is a simple knife-edged pillow. Knife edge because it is flat and sharp, the corners are sharp. Uh, open with a little tiny pair of embroidery scissors, just one corner. And oh, about less than an inch is just fine to open right here. And I keep a um, little safety pin there just to hold my cording in place as I go around the entire pillow. By the way, a little fray check or a little piece of scotch tape on the end keeps that twisted cording from unraveling. And, uh, oh, I looked up in the dictionary because I wanted to know what the difference between raveling and unraveling is, and there is no difference. <laughs> so if someone says, oh, it's raveled, don't correct him and say it's unraveled because it's the same thing, raveling and unraveling. And then you just go all the way around, and you can pin this if you feel insecure about uh, just stitching by hand, but you take a needle and thread, uh, secure it in place, and then just slip stitch all the way around the entire pillow. It will look very much prettier and it will look very much richer. And we have a swap right here. When you get to the very end, just insert the final end right in the same opening, slip stitch in place. And as you're slip stitching, you're really closing up the gap and you have a very pretty pillow that if you were to go to a uh, professional decorator shop would cost you a lot more money than a plain pillow. Adding decorative edging to your pillows, I think it's a good thing. Now to our 30 things. We had a lot of fun with our first guest, Cynthia Nixon. Her character on Six and the City, Miranda, is not what you would call domestic. So we were eager to find out what she was like in real life. I taught her how to design a pomegranate and nut centerpiece. Number 18 on our list of 30 things everyone should know. Watch. So the pomegranates have been, here you can take one. We okay. have gloves on just to protect our hands from uh, Makes me from feel like a surgeon. This. And uh, you can just brush, that's your little brush. Okay, thank you. Just brush this um, aquasizing. This gets, you buy at the craft store or the art store, and it's called Rollco. It's water-based gold sizing. Uh, they use this for gold leafing. And you can keep this on here for 24 hours before you start your gilding um, or your, um, your mica-ing, where we're gonna use uh, different colors of mica powder. And just completely coat the fruit. You can do this to oranges, you can do it to grapefruits. We did it for pumpkins um, at Halloween. What, what do you mean you leave it on for 24 well, yeah, this, hours? Well, so what this does is make a sticky surface, just the light sticky surface. So the powder will the pow adhere. Yeah, that's right. So then uh, that can just stay here. We, the, we have these already done, and, and you see how it changes from milky, like this, to very shiny. This is tacky. All you want it to do is be tacky. And then, um, if you're working and doing a lot of these, wear this so that you don't ingest the powder. It's just like talcum powder. You don't want to get it into your lungs. Uh, so wear this. But uh, we're just going to do one. Just pick up one of these little tacky ones. Now, would you want to do a super copper? 
That's a beautiful color. Or you can do an antique copper, which is a little darker, or you can do a super bronze color. These wonderful mica powders come in many different shades. And why don't you do the super copper? Okay. And you use a soft uh, fiber, um, real bristle brush, and just gently, no, no, don't do that Ooh. one. Oh, that has to stay for 24 hours. Oh, I, mean, just I don't, see. You see, use one of those. Oh, I no, see. no, it's okay, but uh, you'll ruin the brush. Got and it. it and, it'll, and you'll get too much on. You won't get that. You know how you use blush on your cheeks, mm -hmm. the, the gold, you know, have the yeah, gold yeah. or silver? Um, so you just want to give this a blush of color. And you just rub this powder all over with your soft brush, not too much, and finish all of the beautiful pomegranates. And then you do the same thing with nuts. Uh, we have um, uh, filberts, walnuts, and pecans. And I think I might just do the filberts. And where do you get the mica powder? Uh, at, also at the craft store. Uh -huh. um, there's lots and lots of interest in crafts these days. And uh, so many of the, of the wonderful stores like Michael's or, or um, Sam Flax here in New York, the art store, you can buy these kinds of powders there. We take our beautiful pomegranates here. So isn't this fun? It is. It it's is so beautiful. fun. Look how beautiful so that quick. one looks. Yeah, it's very fun. So just figure out how many pomegranates you're going to need in your bowl. So you can do f like five this way, I think, and maybe four over here. And the colors are all so glorious. And just mix up the, the different bronzes and coppers like that. And uh, then we need to put a couple more up here. Oh, I think these are so beautiful. And I love pomegranates, and it is pomegranate season. And then, do you want to put some leaves in here? Sure. And then some nuts. And you have one of the 30 things you have to make. Now, it's not just this centerpiece, it's any centerpiece. But to be creative, to be inventive is what it's all about. Don't you think centerpieces brighten your, your home at any time of year? And they are also great gifts. Next, Desperate Housewives, Doug Savant learns the proper techniques for Iron Man Estate. Later, roasting and carving a turkey with Desperate Housewives star, Roger Bart. Stay with us. Whether you're a man or a woman, one thing you should know how to do is iron a shirt. When Doug Savant, don't you want a nice iron shirt just like this one? When Doug Savant is not on the set of Desperate Housewives, he's a proclaimed stay-at-home dad. And when he visited, we happened to have a few dads and their kids in the audience, and a little mayhem ensued. Ironing a shirt is number 17 on our list of 30 things everyone should know. Take a look. Well, this is a shirt. And this is uh, a shirt that uh, has been uh, lightly dampened, like sprinkled. You call it sprinkling. Do you know about sprinkling? Uh, again, Pre wedding. Not, and... not in this uh, Okay, not so in this you, can, you, can sprinkle with a, you can sprinkle with a spray uh, gun like this, a little spray bottle. And I always iron on a towel. Do you iron on a towel when you're I doing don't. a fine I, shirt? I'm going to now. Because just, uh, just because I think that uh, if you're ironing a good shirt, yes. your shirt looks nicely ironed. Did you do that? Uh, I did not. No. This, is, uh, this is the work of a, a, a professional dry cleaner. Oh, Okay, so you send your shirts out. No, not all of my shirts. No. I, no Which ones do you wash? Uh, the 100% cotton and uh, more casual shirts. If I'm oh. going to be wearing a suit, I will send it out to uh, the bar. Fantastic. Oh, so dry this cleaning. is a, a beautiful shirt, and you start on the collar. These are just little simple steps. Uh, always start on the back side of the collar, and you iron until you get it pretty smooth. And then the front side is usually very beautiful. Very, oh, nice. very. Um, Precise. You don't want any creases in that collar. See, your collar is perfect, and so you want it just like that. So you want to emulate the best dry cleaner in the city. A hand iron shirt at the at my local cleaner is something like seven dollars and fifty cents. Wow! So it's actually probably pretty economical to uh, turn on on Sunday night, Desperate Housewives, and put out your ironing board and iron while you're watching. <laughs> actually. <laughs> We have some action on them that might actually cause oneself to, to so do burn you have, themselves. Do you have a nanny at home? I do not. Uh, you we, don't. We've been doing this uh, all without the help of a nanny. Boy, so with we are, four we are, kids all together? Yeah, I know. No, it's not advisable. I recommend no. nannies. I, I yeah. endorse them, and uh, and uh, we're sort of poster children for them because. So you uh, do the inside of the front okay. tabs. Okay. No, no, no. Does this? You did it on the button side. Now, does it have any deleterious effect on the buttons on this well, side? Well, that's why I use it. That's why I use the a towel. towel. See, the towel pads the buttons. 
Oh, would you like to learn how to iron a shirt? <laughs> oh, yes, you would. Here's the thing. <laughs> Keep your hands off the, this is hot. Use an iron, I forgot to mention. Yes. Very important to use a good iron. Do you have a good iron at home? Uh, I don't know. This is great this because is... this not only has a steam surge, see yes. that? That's great for pressing your trousers or uh, ironing a suit, but it also has a spray. A a nice water yeah. spray, which is great. These are functions on yes. our iron at home. Okay, good. This I know. Okay, so what you do after you do the collar, then you do the cuffs. Oh. Again, from the inside. Inside. And then the outside. Okay. And then the little tabs along the cuffs. Yes. And then the entire sleeve. Now, you said you did the sleeves last. I, I, I did them last, yes. Okay, because so I'm, I'm I a do poor them first. Iron. But no, this you're not is a now poor we're iron. simulating the house. We're doing, we're doing really well. <laughs> This is exactly what the stay-at-home moms and dads yeah, put up with. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. They're having the greatest time. Knock it off and give me a beer. <laughs> then, then, <laughs> you do the yoke, the front of the, the outside of the yoke. Yes. Hey, kids, what are you finding? What are you finding? I love the pitter-patter of little feet. <laughs> it is so nice. And then you do the back, because the sleeves in the back are what you're not gonna see especially if you're wearing a suit jacket. Yes, very okay? interesting. And I... then you do the front last, because that's what that you're, going, what you're to going to see. see. Right. Hey, Declan. Declan, where are you? They are so great. They so are... then you just keep ironing. Now, if your shirt has dried out a little bit during, um, during the ironing process, just... you can spritz with we that or spritz, spritz with the iron. And uh, make sure it's all dry while you're ironing it. So that's, you wanna do the front? Let's go. Why don't you do the front here? All right, you I'm do nervous, it. but now, let's go. Now, I want to know if you can tell us anything about, you can talk and iron at the yeah, same time. I'm going to die trying. Here yes. we go. <laughs> uh, see, I'd see, this wouldn't the, 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 be hot enough for me. Oh, it's, it's hot. It's, it's hot. This is the hottest it is. All right. Yeah. Unless they, unless they cut the power on us. Now, what you don't want to do when you're ironing is like, oh, so anyway, I was no, going, no, oh, no. Yeah, this, is, right. this is a very <laughs> expensive new shirt. <laughs> What's okay, happening in, uh, at Wisteria Place? At Wisteria Lane, well, um, Wisteria Lane. Wisteria Lane, Melrose are, uh... Place. <laughs> <laughs> this is a woman who knows my history. Uh... Married to, you, you know. Um, no, you have to finish the front, the back's no, done. No, oh, that's... Back's done, okay. you have to do this little spot, see? Oh, I missed that... Yeah, don't miss any. Yeah, yeah well, that's it, see? Yeah, I was gonna tuck that. Now, see what she's um, doing. do you use the end of this thing? Do you, do you, do you back that... Shoulder into, yeah, the, into the end. Yeah, you should. But do the do the front first. Do this part first. And okay. Then, and then do the edge, and then just do around there, and okay. then you're done. The shirt All right. is done. All right. I know. I can see. I'm annoying you by about, the way it, I'm it doing this. It should take if you is... concentrate about four minutes. Now look minutes what I've done. To do what, a shirt. How, see how that That's will. That's okay. Don't worry. Don't Just, worry. No, don't worry. That's right. You're doing it right. You can go uh, over it like this too. You can now. Do you ever? Well, these press buttons are these buttons are real pearls, so they're not gonna. Nothing's bad is gonna happen. Okay. So you would actually press on top of the buttons. You can. You can. Yeah. Oh, all the things and I don't know. And then when you're done, you hang up your shirt. Okay, Let's well, see, we're, we're, not not we're not quite there but yet. We're Let's running go. out Let's of time, Doug. We are. It's a segment. This is not, like, we are going to this is not like Desperate Housewives where we have for a second, take days two. to do everything. How long does it take to do a half hour? Uh, one hour show we get done um, in eight, eight, eight shooting days, and uh, so but generally it takes days, us nine. Nine days. Four and a half days. Yes, are we dancing? Yes. Hang this up. Uh, and I don't like to button because if you button, you wrinkle, so I just uh, leave it like this, or just button one button, like the second button down. And there you have a perfectly ironed shirt and helped by one of the desperate house husbands. <laughs> Doug Savant, thank you so very much. Thank it's you great. so much. <laughs> Doug was a great guest. When we come back, Roger Bart learns the art of roasting a turkey. Later, Martha and Roger make mouth-watering gravy for their roasted turkey. Don't go away. One of the easiest and most delicious ways to prepare a turkey is simply to roast it. Desperate Housewives star Roger Bard stopped by right before Thanksgiving to learn how to roast a turkey. Number 16 on our list of 30 things everyone should know. We started with a delicious stuffing. Watch this. I thought I would make a stuffing that's been very popular over the years, and it's a fruit and nut stuffing. Oh, good, I would have and chosen it's, that. And it's extremely delicious. All right. And um, first in a bowl, we have to um, sort of macerate mm -hmm. our fruit. So we have some apricots, 12 dried apricots, 12 pitted prunes. Do you think you'd like a fruit and nut stuffing? Uh, Do you not, think? I, I would love it, yeah. 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 And, uh, a cup of dark raisins. These are really beautiful, big, dark raisins. And a half a cup of dried currants. Mm. And then just 
soak them in about a quarter of a cup of bourbon and let them stay. You can do this the day before and let them really soak up the bourbon and keep it in the refrigerator if you do that overnight. We have it already um, macerated here, mm -hmm. so you can throw that into that bowl, but I want to show you that you have to saute in butter uh, one, excuse me, two large onions that are peeled and finely chopped, two ribs of celery, you can include the green leafy parts if you like, and two tart unpeeled apples cut up into a similar sized dice. So this gets sauteed and you also um, have to warm up the nuts. We have all these beautiful nuts. You can use a combination of cashews, uh, pecans, macadamia nuts, walnuts. So that goes in too. Fantastic. Is it still looking good to you? Fantastic. It's, it's gonna really, it'll help me in the next morning too. I can already and tell you. And salt and pepper. <laughs> yeah. What, the prunes? The, all the fruits. Yes. And salt and lots, I like lots of black pepper. Yeah. And we have a teaspoon of ground ginger, a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, a quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, just to give it a little bite, and yeah. a teaspoon of ground cloves. So that all goes in. So you're not making a fruit filling um, for a pie, but we're making it stir deeply. Deeply, uh. Roger. Um, yes, Roger. And uh, you're not a bad cook. You're not, you're, at least you've kept. Oh, I'm stirring. I know, but. I haven't added butter to yeah, but two a couple eggs But yet. actually, you haven't dropped anything. No, no, yeah, you no. haven't it's messed good. up anything. No. And then this is brioche, and it's. Uh, You've seen me use the brioche for the bread pudding. You've seen me use it for other things, but I like brioche because it's really light and it, as it cooks inside the turkey, it kind of puffs up. These are eight slices of a really good um, brioche. Wow, I'm gonna, I'm gonna break the brioche. Well, use this then. It's All okay, right. so take it. Yeah, Everybody take. knows I'm a huge fan of brioche. Yes, brioche. <laughs> now go from the outside up. Yeah. Right. And I'm gonna add about a cup of low sodium chicken stock. That helps also um, get that dry bread nice and puffy. Yeah. And what's gonna really do the job, these eggs, yeah. three large eggs, lightly beaten, right. will then uh, incorporate with everything and puff it up a little bit. And one teaspoon of coarsely chopped parsley Beautiful. leaves. Okay? Mm -hmm. So get that really mixed. All right. And then we have two cups of cranberries. And it never ends. I remember when I was doing my first Thanksgiving special for PBS a long time ago, the bowl was just slightly too small for this. Right. And the stuffing started to keep getting higher and higher. And uh, so it, it, was, it was very Is that funny. What's happening? Well, no, not until it's cooked. All right. Not until it's cooked. Okay, so you're perfect. So keep doing it. Go way under and get that all mixed up. Yeah, like right. that. Yeah, that's good. Because we want everything throughout the entire turkey. Now we're going to stuff. You can stuff the big cavity. All right. Okay. All right. So, what Anyone's, are you going to use for this? Well, I'm just. No, just, no, no. Okay. Look, come on. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Enough's enough. All right. Yeah. All right. So, I'm what do I do? I have you. to kind of uh, drop. I literally well, in first, my hands. This is a I... beautiful farm-raised organic turkey, and we love turkeys like mm. this that are. Um, and you notice that the breast is still plump, but it isn't one of those gigantic, overblown uh, turkeys. Mm. You salt the inside. This has been washed and dried, and you salt the inside and pepper just a little bit so that the meat gets flavor. Now, have you uh, won awards for being a comedic uh, actor? Well, I won a, a Tony Award for playing Snoopy. So oh. I'm for playing a correct Oh, how sweet. <laughs> now, did you notice what I just did? Yeah, I, I did. I just put, uh, in the neck cavity, I put a little bit of the stuffing, and I'm now just securing the neck flap, this flap of skin. I have to do with, the same thing. Yes. All the time. There. And you right put enough in to make it look puffy, but not too much so it doesn't bulge out. Now you fill in the big cavity. All right, you got it. The big cavity. You want me to hold it up here? Casey, yeah. if you could spread okay. the legs from, yeah. <laughs> right. No, wait till the next segment. You'll like that That's even fantastic. better. I literally, I've had fantasies Roger. about this for years. Oh. All right, guys. <laughs> this is very hot. All right. Have you never done this? Well, uh, not with you. <laughs> With you. Innuendo, the master <laughs> of innuendo over here. It's amazing. I don't want to start blushing. <laughs> Amidst all the innuendo, we finished stuffing the turkey. When it was time to truss it and prepare the vegetables for the bottom of the pan, we were having so much fun that I could barely keep track of what was going on. And I can't imagine what Evan Lobel, the great butcher, was thinking as he watched us from that prep kitchen over there. Why don't you demo okay. what goes in the bottom of the right. pan? Okay. So, talk, talk. Oh, uh, I dumped carrots in. Now, how many? How many? How many? Uh, there are 12. <laughs> <laughs> 
two. Two? Oh, carrots. two. Twelve pieces that divide into no, twelve pieces. two carrots coarsely chopped. Oh, that's why I'm supposed to read that. <laughs> two carrots coarsely chopped. And then we're gonna have one onion, which is also coarsely chopped. Two parsnips. Peeled. Coarsely chopped and peeled. <laughs> Peeled and coarsely chopped. And two, you, have, you have to peel them first, because if you peel them after you chop them, it would be very difficult. Yeah, that would be. And right? time consuming, right? Uh, yeah, time it's consuming. ridiculous. And two, a celery ribs. I've never heard of a, it, it's a rib? That's a rib, the long thing. I had no idea, that oh. was a stock. Who, who here can well, agrees with me? Either. <laughs> <laughs> okay, salt and, and so salt and pepper, and then All you right. spread these on the bottom of the pan. Okay, and now I'm trusting. Was it? <laughs> Roger. What? I mean, oh my God. Well, you know what? I mean, I, how do you. This turkey will not have any gravy. <laughs> if you do such a thing. Well, you know, I'm so used to now dumping everything in. I just thought. Here, we'll just put some nice I didn't know. Uh, well, you salt. Gotta specify these things. I had no idea. Okay, now, just now you put the rack on top of that. Put the rack. We have a lot to do. Hurry, Sorry. stop, stop, okay. hurry. What? Rack on top of that. I am folding under the wing tips. Literally, it's just gonna be slightly under, peppery. Underneath the breast. <laughs> slightly. Slightly peppery. 14 tablespoons. <laughs> 14. And notice I did not even get angry. <clears throat> if, if I were Brie, I would be very angry. Put the turkey in! <laughs> So now, this is the way I trust. Now, Evan, ah, there's Evan Lobel in the kitchen. I just want you to watch that I'm trusting this correctly, okay? So my way of trusting, and I don't know if it's Evan's, he's the great, great butcher, uh, is to take a long string, fold it in half, put it underneath the neck cavity, up over the wings. Now watch this, this is important when you're <coughs> tying Brie up to murder this is, her. This is, I was gonna say, this is fantasy number two and for then, me right here. Then over the drumsticks. Yeah. yeah. Around the drumstick yeah. ends, the feet, tie and plump, go around like this, again around the, the drumsticks, and you have a perfectly trussed turkey with one simple little thing. See how easy? Yeah. And I, I tie it into a bow because, um, <laughs> because then it's easy to take off. Yeah. So. You want to okay. be able to do that. Okay, now, this is the part that you're going to like the best of the whole day. All right. Okay, you slather this with soft butter. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and you can't mess that up too no, much, no. okay? All over, right? <laughs> and now, right? in the meantime, I am, I am making the wonderful, <laughs> I'm making what's gonna make the turkey really brown. Besides what Evan, uh, Evan, I'm calling you Evan now. Besides what Roger is doing, I'm getting a little discombobulated. Uh, <laughs> we have four sticks of butter and one bottle of a really nice Pinot, Noir, uh, um, Pinot Grigio or a uh, Sauvignon Blanc or some nice white wine or Chardonnay. And you melt the butter and uh, add the wine, get it warm, and then you take your cheesecloth and you soak this in that mixture. <laughs> Are you done yet? I'm sorry. All the butter, all the butter. Oh, Here, all the butter, all of it. It's supposed all to massage it. the bird, too, right. apparently. <laughs> it's dead already, yeah, it doesn't. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if you did it before it died, that would make a difference. Well, it's yeah. dead, it doesn't matter. All underneath, too, because oh. if you miss underneath here, it won't get brown. All right. Here, all the butter. Okay. Here, all the butter. All right. Great. In the, and every little crack and cranny. <laughs> <laughs> I knew he would like this. I just this knew it. Fantastic. Okay? Hang on. No, don't it. spread them. No, okay. <laughs> Trust. In there, way in there. Way in there? Yeah. And then you put that here. <laughs> this is a finely lubed bird okay. right here. Okay, so put him back. All right. This is not a car. All right. <laughs> put it up. This put is it a turkey. Yeah, right here. All right. Come this on. is a turkey. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Oh, beautiful. Okay, now you put that in your hair and then you no. <laughs> here. All right. Do this and then you wash your hands in the sink. Thank now, you. Now <laughs> now over this you put and uh, make sure your oven is preheated for uh, at 450 degrees. So this cheesecloth is what's going to give you that lacquered look, okay? So you spread this entirely over the bird 
and really encase the bird in the cheesecloth. And it should be completely soaked. Mm, I, I really think this is the most fantastic. We did a lot of turkeys before we came up with this method of uh, lacquering, really lacquering the bird and keeping it moist and delicious. So this goes into the oven you uh, for 30 minutes, basting every 15 minutes with this same butter and wine mixture. And keep going, and this is what the cheesecloth looks like. Look at that, when it comes off the bird. So that's that color, but the turkey itself, I have to wash my hands, okay. the turkey itself is so phenomenal. So the turkey went in the oven, and all we had left to do was to make the gravy. We'll show you that when we come back. <laughs> Later, Martha shares her secrets for removing even the most stubborn stains. Stay with us. We're continuing with our list of 30 things everyone should know. And number 16 is preparing a roast turkey. In the last segment, Roger Barton and I trust our Thanksgiving bird. We put it in the oven to roast. The next step, making the gravy. Watch. So now, I just want to show you before, because this is still questionable, when, once the turkey goes in, and always start in the 450 degree oven with the feet in. And then, you, every 15 minutes, with a bold baster, you baste the cheesecloth all over with that same butter and wine mixture. So every 15 minutes. And you'll see, it's gonna to get to be the most, it's gonna look like this. Look, yeah. look how beautiful. Isn't that a gorgeous turkey? So take the rack out, and it's very important to let the turkey rest. How long would you rest your turkey before you carved it? I would, I'd say 90 minutes. <laughs> about, about 20 to 30 minutes at go. the most. <laughs> 90 minutes, it'll be icy cold, and everybody will think you didn't know what the heck you were doing. Yeah. So I usually um, stop when that little thing goes. So this is, this is what's left in the bottom of the pan. Not Roger's pan, because his would have to be discarded because it has way, way too much, too pepper, much pepper in it. So, um, and if I had had time, I would have taken all the vegetables out, washed them, put them back in the pan, and started over again. Don't, you know, you're never in too much of a rush to do that. Yeah. So if you have somebody like Roger, uh-oh, <laughs> a piece of something in here. It looks like aluminum foil. Okay, there. So. Those are the vegetables, and you can uh, then pour these juices, which also includes all that butter, into a separator. This is called a um, gravy separator. Do you have one of these? Did your parents have one? Uh, I don't remember. You know, this is kind of interesting. And then turn the flame on in the pan, and you scrape up all the little turkey bits, and so you'll see what's happening. So look, it separates, yeah. and so all the fat comes to the top. Right. And uh, you pour that off. Well, actually, you pour what's good in the bottom out into, see what's coming up? I Not do. the fat. Yeah. Just the solids into there. And I think that that's, I'll pour it into here, actually. Well, now that explains why everybody in my family was a little wide, because of the, we didn't have the, Turkey, the, the fat gravy separator. separator. Yeah. yeah, so that's all butter. You don't want that or fat. Yeah. Now, into this, Three this is tr uh, turkey giblet stock, and uh, <laughs> the recipe for this is on our website. Unfortunately, we don't have enough time to do that, but it's basically the giblets cooked with stock and water um, and maybe a little bit of wine if you like wine in your gravy um, and uh, some vegetables, and just make a good, rich stock and chop up the giblets. You can shake this. Fantastic. All right. The flour, three tablespoons of flour, will just be enough oops, to to um, <laughs> thicken the gravy. So, okay, as soon as you shake that, put, pour it into here. All right. Pepper? Uh, no pepper. Okay. <laughs> Not until you're done with the gravy. Ready? Okay, pour that in. All right. Okay, all of it. Yeah, just all of it. And this mm, makes a creamy, good. delicious, wonderful gravy. Cook it long enough. Yeah, you can wash your hands if you want. Uh, it's nice to have an island sink when you're cooking like this. Do you have a sink in your kitchen? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So what are you doing? What are you going to do for Thanksgiving this year? What are you? What oh, we're having a, we're having a really fun Thanksgiving, cooking big, big turkey. I ordered a 35 pounder. Oh my gosh! And we are cooking all kinds of desserts. I've been picking apples for the last few days. Now this is the gravy. Just stick your finger in there and eat. And taste there. it. Yeah, yeah. Tastes good. Oh, wow, huh? fantastic. See? Yeah. yeah. And so this will be. You can strain it if you want. If you don't want the giblets in it, and you will have a really beautiful dark brown um, gravy that will. Absolutely enhances turkey.
A great gravy makes for a beautiful looking and great tasting turkey. Next, expert carver Evan Lobel shares his masterful techniques for carving a turkey. Later, you don't want to miss our Frico Bowls. They're a deliciously edible good thing. To number 15 on our list of 30 things everyone should know, carving a turkey. In the last segment, Roger Bart and I made a delicious gravy as the turkey was cooling. Then it was time to call on butcher Evan Lobel, who taught us how to carve that turkey like a pro. Take a look. You take the turkey out on the platter and show your family, and then if you're nervous, you take it back into the kitchen, right? Which is what I do. You do. You he takes it back into this the kitchen. This is my first turkey, by the way. Oh, yes, right. <laughs> right. How many turkeys are you going to sell this year at Low Bells? Uh, well, we sold, uh, we sold out Car on the website. You have website. to carve while you do it. I will do it. Take yep. the string off. Okay. Sold out on the website and... Uh, you did? Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I read somewhere that 45 or 48 million turkeys will be consumed on this Thanksgiving in America. Wow. And uh, I was having a manicure, and my man I asked my manicure, I said, where do turkeys, where are they indigenous to? Do you know? No. Mexico, and she's Mexican. She was very proud she knew that, and I was very proud that she did. Okay, so what are you going to do? Okay, what I'd like to do first is just remove the leg and the thigh from the breast. Okay. And open it up. Mm, Cut down, good. straight juicy, down. awfully juicy. Until you see that ball joint. Sometimes you may have to lift it up and just make a little crack. Okay. And... There we go, and we're just going to put this aside mm. later, and we'll so do that's the same why thing. You want the you want the turkey to rest how long? We were he said ninety minutes, 20 minutes. I said twenty minutes. Twenty minutes is I good. I was right. See, yeah, I was right. Twenty minutes. <laughs> I'm make, sorry. For shock. <laughs> important to make sure that it <laughs> make sure that it's tented while it's resting. Yeah. Very important. You don't tented. want to dry it. Tent with a big with foil. Uh, foil tent. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So take the other leg right. and then we do the other thigh. one, and just follow the natural perforation that you will see. And again, here's a good shot of that ball joint, the mm, thigh. So yep. just remove that or, or expose right, yeah, right it anyway. Right there is the ball joint. Okay. Right. And then you can take it off. And the dark meat is well. the favorite of all, all my guests. I like the white meat and I like the wings. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? I love the wings Turkey too. Wings. When they come out crunchy, it's nice. Yeah. And here we have the uh, stuffing. So we'll take that out. Mm. So we, oh, we're gonna, juicy. Oh, Very we're going to put that right here on the, do you like the fruit and nut? A recipe? Oh, Did I you love see that? it. I love it. So we have to speed it up. All right. Unfortunately, okay. no, unfortunately, like the skin, so live leave TV. The skin there. Yeah, leave all the right, skin. Speed it oh, up. Look how beautiful that looks. See, it's all the beautiful red cranberries. Mm, gorgeous. Lovely. Gorgeous. And then you look for the middle of the breastbone and go off to one side, and just run your knife along, keeping it as close now, to the carcass Lobel as you knives? can. Of course. Yes. So if you want to know anything about um, the kinds of meat that you're eating, the uh, wonderful ways to carve, the wonderful ways to grill, to cook, uh, you can uh, get any one of the, how many cookbooks do you guys have now? Now let me just Three. clean this up a little bit. Let okay. me take this, like, let me just take this back to the That's stuffing. one juicy bird. Okay. Boy, is it juicy. Wow. Okay, and then what I like to do so is. So is that, is that? Nothing like Nothing like it. Nothing like it. Start off with the bird upside down and go like this. <laughs> I like to slice it with the fibers. Yes. Because a lot of people like to do it the chunky way, and that would be like across chunky. the I like, I don't I like, like slices. I like slices too. I like slices and with skin. Actually, it's a little too mm. fibrous for me when you do it chunky. Yeah. This sort of keeps the juices inside the turkey as it's going. And then we can just. And we can do this. this uh, we can also get um, all different kinds of information on lowbells.com. Oh boy, this is so good. One. <laughs> now here. Just show one leg, because that's all we have time for. Okay. But you got the idea. So the whole leg, the whole drumstick goes on for those who want the drumstick. And with the leg and the thigh, I like to do it almost like a pulled pork, because mm. there's a lot of yucky stuff in between so there. So take out all the. And I take take out, out all the tendons. Yep. Take out all the tendons, and there's some really nice meat. And you can just clean it up as you're doing it. And this See, is going to look so beautiful. And garnish it with a little bit of uh, parsley, if you oh, like. Beautiful. Beautiful. Or, we're going to show you a lot of uh, wonderful garnishing. So for more information on carving uh, turkeys, you can log on to MarthaStewart.com. You can go to LowBells.com. And thank you very much. You were great, uh, Roger. My pleasure. And Evan, thank you for coming uh, on. Uh, the busiest day of the year. Right. Evan really carves carefully and perfectly, doesn't he? And that turkey was really good.
Next, number 14 on our list of 30 things everyone should know. Removing stains don't go away. Our list of 30 things everyone should know came from our staff here at the show. If you have your own things to add to the list, email us at MarthaStewart.com. We'd love to hear all your ideas. Number 14 on our list is removing stains, something everyone needs to know how to do. Watch this. This is a red wine stain. And everybody's always asking, how do you get red wine stains out? So what we do is pour a little bit of white vinegar and always keep this in your laundry room, a little white vinegar onto the red wine stain and let this stay overnight. I spot clean my linens after a dinner party. I take everything down to the basement and just spot clean. If it's a beautiful old tablecloth, I'll be very, very careful. I might just soak a fine, fine linen in just uh, cool water overnight just to keep the stain from setting. Uh, and I might not even try the vinegar. It depends on what it is. But this is a cotton napkin which has been uh, stained and that will stay overnight. The next day, you take this out of the vinegar you can rinse it a little bit in uh, cool water and then take a little bit of, and I use unscented Tide. It's just one of my favorite cleansing uh, soaps. You can use a, um, an organic soap too. And I just, with a brush, rub a little bit of this liquid right onto the stain. And then this goes right into the white laundry or the lightly colored laundry and washes out. And generally, no problem whatsoever. If the stain is persistent, you can then do it again with a little bit of hydrogen peroxide and then rinse it out right away. But generally, red wine will come right out. If you have very fine linens, use a mesh bag like this if you have an agitator type washer. If you have the front loader washer, which is my preference now nowadays because it has no um, central agitator that tears things. You know how sometimes you get your laundry out and it's all wrapped around? That's not the best for fine linens. The front loader is better. So now, oh, wax. Oh, everybody has trouble with wax. So we have a spot of wax right here. You can try to cool the wax and scrape it off on top of some ice. You can put some ice on top and underneath and just harden the wax and then peel it off as carefully as you can. And then, it's, so there's still some wax here. I can, I can probably peel it off, but it won't all come off. So line your, your ironing board with paper towels and then cover with paper towels. And then with a hot iron, just apply some heat onto the wax. You can also run hot water through the wax uh, which is sometimes very effective. But put the wax upside down so it falls off into the sink. Don't uh, let it spread all over your, your uh, it's, it's coming out, just starting to loosen up. And keep scraping it off and move it around on your paper toweling. There, I'm just raising the heat a little bit. Now, once you get the wax mostly out. It's going to leave a stain. So you need some mineral spirits, which should go into your uh, laundry room also. And you should also have some isopropyl alcohol. So now see, see what's happening here? You can see it coming up through the paper toweling. See that? That's the wax. And do it again until you don't have any residue coming up. But you will have a stain. There it's, oh, it's almost off. This is fabulous. Now just keep moving it so that uh, even I get surprised <laughs> and happy when it works. OK, so now a little bit of mineral spirits first. Then soften that with the isopropyl alcohol. And you will have, you launder this, and you will have no waxing. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Sometimes the simplest things are the most delicious, like this Frico bowl. We just melted some Parmesan cheese and shaped it into a bowl filled with your favorite salad. Frico bowls are a good thing for the summertime and for entertaining. And what you take is a half a cup of finely grated Parmesan cheese and have a ruler handy. We want a seven inch disc of cheese. So that's about approximately seven inches. You can make them larger or smaller. Uh, you can make them just into little discs, which are also very nice for party entertaining. 
So a half a cup, we can do two on a sheet. Um, and you have to preheat your oven to 375 degrees. You could also make a shape. Uh, you could cut out a kind of a stencil so that you could just fill it. I know Joey would do it that way because he's very efficient and saves a lot of time. Okay, that goes right into the oven. When they come out of the oven, this is the way they are. Uh, this is perfect. Just put this over like this and it will fall down into a perfect cup. Let's get this one off quickly. And these will. It's almost. When they come off, they look like tulips. Tulip cups. They're a very good thing. And look how pretty they look with a little bit of salad in them. I'm sure you feel very accomplished having learned how to make something uh, that looks so good and so professional. Well, it's just a little good thing. Join us tomorrow as we continue our 30 good things uh, everyone should know with guest Carly Simon and Desperate Housewives with Carto Chavira. Have a great day and thanks very much for watching.